Hi, Brave Tribe. Thank you so much for your flexibility and understanding in my rescheduling the call. Tomorrow is my son's 17th birthday, and we are going to be going out to dinner with some of our family to celebrate. I want to share some information to help us have a summer of empowerment, a summer of growth. As a school counselor, when I would see students return back in the fall, you could really tell how much they had grown. And there are lots of things that you can do over the course of this summer. And it doesn't have to be hard. Things you can do so that you are growing and developing and becoming more independent. We're going to look first at nurturing your social emotional skills. And these are different things that you can be focusing on during this summer break. Social emotional skills, think of them as your superpower. It's understanding your emotions and feelings. Understanding the emotions and feelings of other people, being able to communicate effectively, making good decisions, and building positive relationships. When we're able to do all of these things, it can help us feel more comfortable in certain situations. It helps us regulate ourselves and our emotions so we feel a little bit more in control as we experience new challenges in life different stressors in life, having our own social emotional skill set can help us deal with those stressors and different challenges that we might face in the future. Just like superheroes have their own unique abilities, we too can develop our own set of super skills to conquer different situations and become the best version of ourselves. We're going to embark on this journey together and look at social emotional skill sets that we need. And this is an opportunity not to judge yourselves, but an opportunity for some self-awareness and curiosity. As we go through some of this information, ask yourself, is this something that I'm able to do? Is it an area that maybe I'm getting a little bit better at? It helps us when we have awareness, it allows us then to look at what areas do we still need to build? What areas can we maybe practice? Awareness can be a very helpful tool. First, we want to look at our social emotional skills that you have with your understanding and managing our own emotions. First, we have to have self-awareness and self-awareness is knowing, understanding, and trusting yourself. Then we also have to have self-regulation, being able to control our impulses and our emotions. I want you to think a little bit about how you are in being self-aware and how you are in regulating yourself, in being able to manage your emotions. Let's look first at our self-awareness. Self-awareness is going to first look at our self-concept what we think about ourselves, when we think positively about ourselves, when we give ourselves grace and compassion to be imperfect, we don't expect perfection, very important. That helps us have some flexibility. If we are very rigid in our expectations of ourselves, if we have a high level of perfectionism sometimes with ourselves, that can be very difficult. It makes us fragile. It makes us inflexible. And we break a little easier. So we want to be very loving and accepting of us as human beings, that we are flawed. We all make mistakes. And it's okay to make those mistakes. And despite having flaws and being human and making mistakes, we still love ourselves. So look at your self-concept. What do you think about yourself? Do you find yourself thinking a little bit more negatively about yourself? Be aware and then look at ways that maybe you can shift, can shift that thought, how you could focus on something that is positive. When we focus on our flaws, it's like a magnifying glass. We start to magnify those things and we then start to get trapped in just focusing solely on the negatives. We actively have to train our brain to start to refocus on the positives. So you might need to work a little on your self-concept this summer. Summer is an opportunity to reflect and grow. The next is your self-efficacy. 
Self-efficacy is trusting in your ability to succeed in specific situations, being able to do what you want to do, that belief in yourself that you can do it. We need to be our own best friend and check in with ourselves and look at how is your self-efficacy? How do you see your abilities? The third piece of self-awareness is your emotional awareness. Knowing what you are feeling and why you're feeling that. It's really important when we get curious about what we're feeling. Sometimes emotions, they feel like they come out of the blue and that all of a sudden we're really upset, really frustrated, or really angry. But in reality, our emotions are coming from how we think and perceive the things that are happening in our world. And when we can slow down a little bit and start to look at, what am I thinking about? How am I choosing to see the situation? That helps us become more aware of that emotional awareness. We can then follow the breadcrumbs back to why we're upset, what might be under the surface. Self-awareness is going to be a very important tool in your social emotional skills. And this is an important thing for us to continue to develop, especially as we're moving from upper elementary into middle school into high school. We are going to be building more and more of that self-awareness. And you're going to be becoming more and more who that future version of you is going to be. The other key piece of social emotional skills is your self-regulation. Emotional regulation is where we're able to manage our emotions to help us meet our goals. Being able to keep in check that emotion. When you have different emotions, ask yourself, does the problem match the level of your reaction? We want to have those match each other. So if it is a big problem, it makes sense that you would have a bigger and stronger emotional reaction. If it's a smaller problem, right? A little thing where maybe you forget to turn in your homework. That's a small problem. You can think to yourself, okay, I'm going to let my teacher know and I will send them an email with that attachment as soon as I get home. Now, a big emotional reaction to that would be crying and breaking down and texting your parent and saying, I'm going to fail and everything is awful. The reaction in that case doesn't match the size of the problem. The older we get, we want more of that emotional regulation. It feels more comfortable to be around people who know how to control their emotions. It does not mean that they're a robot and they're not feeling it means that they're demonstrating the correct response, the correct intensity, and also paying attention to how socially appropriate it is in different situations to have different responses. Looking at how are you in managing your emotions? Are you in control of those? Do you have a difficulty sometimes in managing? Some of the tools that we have here in the Brave World Tribe that might help you Anger iceberg is a great way to look at what's under the surface because all of our behaviors come from a need or they come from how we perceive things. Another helpful tool that you might want to look at is if you're having a conflict with friends is the conflict trigger iceberg. Sometimes there's things that go on where we feel maybe left out, excluded, ashamed, guilty. And that triggers a reaction with our friend. And then we're having a hard time managing those emotions. Under self-regulation, one of the others is the ability to delay gratification. Being able to postpone an immediate reward for a better outcome later. An example might be not responding to a text message when you're sitting and talking with friends because the better outcome is you're building the connection with the people you're with and you can always respond later to that text. Someone may share a story with you and it feels like a juicy story that you want to share with others that you might want to gossip about. 
delayed gratification is where you would not share that juicy story. You would talk about something else. So you're delaying that immediate gratification or that immediate urge you might have for the long run where it's better connections and relationships and showing up with your values, character, and all of those things. The other piece to self-regulation is frustration, tolerance, being able to face difficulties without being overwhelmed by anger or disappointment. We all have different things that we experience in life, different situations that we find particularly frustrating. The more that we can tolerate those, the stronger our social emotional skills. We want to work on that because that area, you will experience frustrating situations in school, in relationships, and in your workplace. So building up that tolerance, maybe even using some of that self-talk, okay, this is frustrating, but in the scheme of things, this isn't a very big deal. I can tolerate this. Frustration tolerance is for situations that are frustrating. It does not mean that we should tolerate being mistreated, abused, hurt, ridiculed, or bullied. That is different. But we all know we've had situations where we find a friend's comment to be a little irritating. Someone in class that just for some reason frustrates or irritates us. Having some patience and acceptance and tolerating that initial feeling without reacting and quickly saying something that we might later regret. This is important in our relationships. So take a little inventory. How are you in your self-awareness and how are you with your self-regulation? These are areas that we are always continuing to build and improve on. So just know that even if you have a difficult time or maybe there's a little hiccup with a friendship, each experience is a new opportunity and it's a new opportunity to practice some of these skills. Next is our social emotional skills with others. These help us form and sustain positive relationships. And there's two components with these as well. The first is our social awareness. And the second is our positive communication. Let's take a look at our social awareness. So social awareness is understanding other people's feelings, their needs, and their concerns. There's three things that are involved in our social awareness. First, our ability for perspective taking, understanding a given situation from multiple points of view. Being able to look at a situation and understand how other people might see it or experience it. When we are more aware of this and the ability to take other people's perspective, it will help you in regulating yourself when there's conflict. It helps you not take things so personally because we then start to understand everybody sees the situation from their unique perspective. We then don't take things so personally when people don't see things exactly the way we see them. The other piece with social awareness is our empathy, being able to put ourselves in another place to almost walk in their shoes and understand what their life is like, their experiences. Having empathy for others helps you become a good friend. It helps you become a caring citizen of the world where we can then have perspective that not everyone experiences life like you. There may be other challenges, other experiences that are just as valid as yours. And with empathy comes the understanding that we may not always understand how someone else is feeling. Sometimes we have to ask and be curious and not create a story in our head about how we think someone else is feeling. The third piece for social awareness is our pro-social behavior, our actions that we take to help other people, to benefit other people. It's acting out of the kindness of our own heart. It's doing things without thought how you might benefit, being a caring, fine, considerate, and socially aware person helps so much in forming new positive relationships. 
that other aspect of our social and emotional skills with others is our positive communication. Being able to interact with kindness and respect, not only for others, but also for ourselves. And there are three pieces with this as well. First is active listening, paying attention to another person with genuine interest and respect. Really listening to what this person is sharing with you. Listening for understanding is what we all want to do with active listening. The next is our assertiveness. Being able to advocate for yourself with confidence, being honest about your feelings and your experiences, and doing all that with respect. And the third, conflict management. Being able to deal with conflict in a way that enhances learning and the group outcomes. Being able to do something with the conflict rather than complaining or gossiping or holding a grudge and not doing something about these hurt feelings. Research shows that a lot of girls don't communicate assertively because they worry that people will be hurt, that people won't like them if they share their feelings. We want to make sure that we do share our experience. There is a tool in the Brave Girl Tribe on how to handle conflict and how to have a difficult conversation. We really want to practice and make sure that we're learning these social emotional skills that we can do with other people. Take a moment. How are you in your social awareness? How are you in your positive communication? Is there an area within either of these that you need a little bit of help? Which of these maybe do you need to focus on a little bit? In your interactions with other people, how am I in my social awareness right now? Am I understanding my feelings and how my friends are perhaps feeling right now? How am I communicating? Am I really active listening? Am I managing a conflict? Or am I trying to sweep it under the mat and let those feelings die down until I feel a little bit better? We know that oftentimes those feelings, if we don't address them, they just lay dormant and they get bigger and bigger until we boil over and the problem becomes much bigger than what it needs to be. We want to practice dealing with those things now. The next thing is our life skills. Imagine that your life skills are the toolkit for life. It's the way that you're going to navigate all the exciting journeys you will experience as you grow up. These are the things that you need to know how to do. And the more tools that we build and we experience early on in life, the more ready we are to handle different challenges and the more independent and confident we feel as we move into the future. So this summer, I want you to focus on different things that you can practice Here are the 10 skills that you want to develop in middle school. These are important life skills. Take a look at this list. Which ones do you know how to do already? Which ones are maybe a little difficult? Which ones do you need to start practicing now? First, we have how to do laundry. Do you know how to wash your clothes? Do you know how to separate your laundry? Do you know the different temperatures to use? Do you know what can be dried? And do you know what needs to be laid out on a drying rack? Do you have a schedule for doing your laundry? A lot of my college age clients that I work with have difficulty when they go away from home having a schedule or routine or household chores. So this summer, it might be an opportunity for you to set yourself up with a routine schedule for doing some of the things that you should be responsible for. Thinking about how often you would do laundry. In my family, we actually do laundry every day because we don't like to have a big pile at the end of the week or on the weekend. This might be something that you could take on for the family. You might be able to do your laundry. Maybe you can then start helping your parents your siblings, and that may be an extra way to earn some extra income or allowance. Another aspect of doing laundry is, do you know how to put your laundry away? Do you know how to fold your laundry? All those aspects of taking care of your clothes is very important. Two, how to purchase your own clothing. Having a budget and being able to stick to that budget, looking at the certain types of fabrics, the ways to care for those fabrics, knowing how to purchase your own clothes can be a very powerful experience. 
that can leave you feeling more independent. The third is how to earn, manage, and save money. It's important to learn early how to manage your money. We want to make sure that we understand the value of the money that you have, how to handle that money, how to invest that money, how to save that money. We recently had a call on different jobs that you can do when you're not yet old enough to work. And this could be a perfect way for you to start looking at how you earn money. In the future, when you're in college and you need extra money, knowing different ways that you can earn money, different skill sets that you have that are marketable, really important because if you need to find a way to get some extra income, if you've already had experience in earning money and managing that money, saving that money, you're much further ahead than some of your other classmates might find themselves. Fourth, it's very important to learn how to cook some simple meals, making sure that you have a breakfast that you can cook, a lunch that you could make, and a dinner that you could easily prepare. I think being able to make a scrambled egg dish or some sort of omelet is a great skill. Being able to make a sandwich or a salad or a soup very easy recipes to do that. And then some sort of dinner that you could make, especially if you had to do something where your parents were running late from work and you maybe needed to help your siblings or prepare something for yourself. Looking at a balanced dinner that you could make where it would have a protein, healthy carbs, healthy fats, some good vegetables or fruits. Maybe in the summer, once a week, you prepare a meal for your family so you can get into that practice of making a meal and budgeting how much is that meal per person. The fifth, how to clean and maintain that clean room. Keeping up with where your items are, having a place, everything in your room, having a home so it's easy to find your belongings and keep track of your belongings. And also having a method or way to go through things that maybe you've outgrown or no longer need. You can donate those items or even have a yard sale. The sixth is being able to do basic household chores, knowing how to clean the bathroom, how to change the light bulb, how to change the batteries in the smoke detector, how to turn the air conditioning unit off, how to turn the electrical panel off, how to turn the water off in the bathroom in case there was a little flood. Number eight, basic manners and speaking skills. Basic manners and speaking skills are our way of communicating with others and showcasing our best selves, making sure that you know how to say please, thank you, how to interrupt politely, how to make an introduction with someone, how to introduce yourself to an adult, how to get the attention of a waiter in a restaurant, how to place an order, how to ask for your change back. These are all things that are important. Another is how to have a conversation with someone that you don't really know, how to ask open-ended questions, how to be curious, and and how to share information about yourself. Number nine, the ability to wake yourself up in the morning. This is really important. The older we get, the more we need to be in charge of ourselves. And that's knowing when we need to go to bed, making sure that we get that good night's sleep but also being responsible for getting ourselves up. This could be good practice even now in the summer, having an alarm that you set so that you get into that practice. And the 10th life skill is how to organize your schedule and keep up with your responsibilities. This could be an opportunity to start using a planning system or using a calendar this summer that will help you get ready for using a calendar or a planner in the fall when you have more assignments and different things that you have to manage on your schedule. So keeping track of what you currently have and doing that can be very helpful. You might like doing hard copy where you have a calendar in your room that hangs up and you can write things down. You can track when you go out with your friends. It almost becomes a little nice diary of what you did over the course of the year. I use the calendar on my phone as well as a hard copy. And I set a lot of alarms and reminders or alerts so that I make sure I don't forget about those upcoming events. 
as the school year rolls around in the fall, we want to make sure that we're good about keeping up with our assignments and turning in our homework, organizing your schedule and keeping up with your responsibilities. You can start practicing now in the summer when you're not too busy. Brave Tribe, I hope that these tips help bring some awareness for you as you have the summer of empowerment. We're going to nurture those social emotional skills and we're going to build some of the life skills we need as we move forward. Let me know what you might be working on. And if there's any way that I can support you, or if there's any topics that I covered that you need a little bit more assistance or help on, feel free to let me know. We can cover it further in other calls. Take care, sweet friends, and I can't wait to see you soon. Our next call will be next Sunday, July 2nd, back to our regular time of 7 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I can't wait to see you. Continue to live life bravely 